What's up, my friends? Welcome out to the field today. Finally, a sunny day, and we're gonna fly something new from Ishin. This is the Mobula FPV Delta Wing. It is a Delta Wing with ailerons back here. It has a brushless Atom RC motor on here. It's a 2004 series motor. It has around a 30 amp ESC, 500 milliwatt VTX on here. I'm running a 4S 900 milliamp battery, and I also have an 1100 running here. But for your first FPV wing, this one's pretty lightweight. It's really, really fast if you want it to be on 4S. If this is your first time flying FPV wing, I would suggest starting out on 3S even because the throttle is just gonna be not quite as sensitive. On 4S, this thing is a freaking demon. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a maiden flight together. We're gonna do a crash durability test. Then we're gonna do some line of sight and then some FPV finally. We'll come back afterwards. I'll give you my final opinion as always on this new product. You can check it out at the link below if you wanna support the channel. I would appreciate that. So let's go ahead without further ado. Let's, uh, let's do some crashing and some FPV wing flying. Here we go. We're gonna fly this little Mobula today and uh, hopefully it goes well. This is gonna be the maiden flight. All right, guys, here we go. Let's give it a soft launch. Hopefully this goes well. Wish me luck. A lot of power on 4S. Let's see what the damage is. Hopefully we can uh, do another launch. Really sensitive on the throttle. There we go. Wow, with a lot of power. That is just pretty much an FPV race wing. But there I'm like at zero throttle. Look how nice it glides. That's really cool. I'm already ready to FPV this thing because I'm at like 15% throttle and it is just like really quick. I'm afraid to even give it a whole lot of throttle because I think it'll get away from me line of sight. Very nice. Let's go ahead and try to get this thing on the ground and I will uh, do some FPV with you guys. And it's going to be pr fairly durable. Um, I gave this to Diego to fly a while back. He's never flown an FPV wing, kind of like his first deal. And uh, he tore it up pretty good and I put it back together and she's back in the air again. So let's go ahead and put on the FPV goggles, boys. DC Army strong. Let's get it up in the air. Find some FPV with the Ishin Mobula. Here we go. Okay, so a testament to uh, durability test. We just hit the ground, corkscrewed straight into the ground, straight into the ground. There's a tiny bit of separation in the front, but the camera's still intact. Everything still seems to be fine. 
um, all the surfaces are still on so I'm gonna go ahead and give it another launch I, th I think one of my ailerons or my flat or elevons in the back must have got stuck so yeah let's go ahead and put the hatch back on I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a toss again <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back from the flight test. You're looking at the Isheen Mobula Delta FPV wing and it's around a 650 millimeter plane from wingtip to wingtip. It's made out of durable, ultra durable EPP foam. This stuff is crazy durable. I first gave this wing to Diego to fly with Nick. You've seen them on our podcasts and they're just getting into fixed wing flying. So, hey, you know, this is a small wing. I give it to Diego. You know, he takes it as a beginner, sets it up, and he has some pretty hardcore crashes with it. Um, broke the front end to the nose here. There's a, a bit of CA on the front. Broke off both of the vertical stabilizers here. Uh, also broke off one of the winglets on this side. I mean, a really pretty hardcore crash. The camera was pushed back this direction, but I was able to just take a little bit of CA and put it back together and have it flying. So that, I think that's the best thing about the smaller planes. When they hit, they don't have as much mass going forward. And what happens is you have a lot less damage. Even though it looks like a lot, if you take it home and you just put it on the bench and look at it, you come back to it maybe an hour or two later, you'll have it fixed by the next day. And that's the cool thing about the micro scale FPV wings. I, I've crashed larger ones before and it's just, it can be a giant yard sale everywhere. So uh, this one comes in at around $79 guys for just the bare kit. That's like no electronics or anything. It's just the plane um, and all the parts you need to put it together, like the carbon fiber spars on the elevons back there. It doesn't come with servos. If you wanna get servos, the ESC, which is a 30 amp ESC, 
the 2004 series brushless motor, a five inch prop. Without the FPV gear, you can get that one PMP for around $109. And then for $139, you can get the FPV kit, which is pretty much everything you need for the exception of a receiver and a battery. Um, that's the one I have here, and it's running a 500 milliwatt VTX. Right here, it sits up on a platform, which is cool. They give you two platforms in the box as well. I put my AR8360T here from Spectrum. It does have um, AS3X stabilization on here, but I didn't enable it today, so I just flew it in like pure manual mode. You also have a second one, uh, a second plate that you could put up front to ride a smaller receiver. You can fly it on S-Bus as well, or you can fly it on uh, Futaba radios. I have my 4S. 1100 milliamp battery sitting in here after I did my second flight test with it. And that seems to CG out pretty good. Uh, there are CG points just past each servo here. If you put your thumbs on it, this is what you really need to do. You need to balance this plane out and make sure it's a tiny bit nose heavy or completely level before you do your first launch. And guys, put some expo in there. Put about 35% expo in this plane before you do your first launch, and you'll thank me later. Um, you need softer controls on it. You don't need full throw either. Probably limit the servo travel to, I'd say, about 80% out of 100, and that's going to save you a lot as well. For the beginners as well, if you're doing a manual flight, um, if you're using iNav, you don't need to mess with any trim on the radio, but if you're, you're just flying off a receiver and you're doing full manual flight, Put a little bit of up trim. Go down on your elevator servo, uh, your trim here, and raise the servos up on the elevator axis, just maybe a couple millimeters on each side. You can see right there, mine's just barely raised. So it'll keep the nose up when you do your first maiden launch. Launch it line of sight, fly maiden um, line of sight first before you fly FPV. Uh, and, and definitely you'll thank me later. Fly it around the field a little bit, do a field test, and then put it down toss it again, and then do your FPV flight test. It also comes with carbon spars here, which I really like, and it comes with these two millimeter bolts that go through and keep this locked down. Now make sure that you screw these control arms on pretty tight. You don't want these too close to the end and falling off. Um, one of them I was testing on the bench earlier and it wasn't screwed down enough and it actually came off before my maiden flight. So I've double checked both of those connection points and made sure they were securely screwed down onto these posts. So very important. Um, you can also on the bottom adjust these, turn everything on, make sure all these are level with the surfaces on both sides when you turn everything on. You have to take a screwdriver and move the servo arms just a little bit on each side until it's completely level. And then again, also what I did was give it a little bit of up trim so that it keeps the nose up on your maiden launch. I forgot to do that on the first one today and uh, you guys saw what happened. I just nosed into the ground and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have no up, so, uh, up trim in my servo. So a little bit of up trim keeps the nose up and I was off and flying some FPV after that. So uh, I, I think it went pretty good today. It's a smaller size wing than what I'm honestly used to. My, I think my, my favorite point of FPV wings, like size-wise, would probably be around a 60-inch wing. I love that. It's uh, uh, something that I usually fly on, say, 3 to 4S. And honestly, I feel like 4S is kind of overkill for how small this is, but man, it is fast on 4S. And again, if you're a beginner, start out on 3S on this plane and enjoy it cruise with it, learn how to fly FPV fixed wing. Um, uh, you know, the FPV wing is, is kind of harder to fly than your traditional tail plane. So if you want the best, uh, my, my best recommendation for learning fixed wing, I'll put some links down below for traditional FPV planes. And then I'll also put the link down there for some FPV wings. Um, but I know some of you guys just can't stand not to fly the FPV wing because they just look so cool, don't they? <laughs> They really do. And I think this plane, it's easy to fix. It's durable. It could take a hell of a beating. It took a better crash on the Maiden today than the, the Delta that was from Zod earlier on the channel. You guys saw me destroy that one. The torque rolled. Uh, I think I had three tosses on it before it was completely destroyed and I just had to leave the field. So um, that one's around the same price, around $98. It's bigger than this one, but this one this one is a lot easier to set up and get up in the air. So I, I would highly recommend this one. And, and the price point's not bad either. So you can get cheap parts and everything on there is cheap to replace. Nine gram servos are not a lot of money. They are digital, by the way. And 
I'm a happy guy today because it was beautiful flying today and I was able to fly, get, fly with you guys, get it up in the air, and finally see some sunshine. I, I've been waiting for this all winter and finally it looks like spring might, might actually be coming, you guys. So I appreciate you hanging out with me on the channel, guys. Please do subscribe on the channel and uh, keep your ears open for all those new drones we have coming up on the channel for giveaway, the dollar drone and the new free drone store. So um, some pretty cool stuff. We also have a discount drone store. We have so many different ways you can get a drone now and you can even get an NFT drone. Um, you can check out dronecamps.com to check out all the different ways that you can get stuff from me because I don't need to fly all this stuff, you guys. But again, I appreciate you hanging out with me. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.